Hi friends! Do you have a favorite plant? I do. Her name is Begonia Maculata. I love her so much. And you should too, because she's gorgeous. Today we're going to talk about Begonia Maculata, or the polka dot begonia, and I'll show you how to propagate and take care of her. Let's get started. Alrighty, so Begonia Maculata, if you do not have this plant, you should go out and get it right now. The polka dot plant, obviously, it's called the polka dot plant, why? It's got polka dots, but it doesn't just have polka dots. It has silvery, shimmery polka dots, which is better than just plain old polka dots, and they're on these really pretty olive leaves with red on the back, super pretty. Um, these plants are from Brazil, the rainforest of Brazil. So they like, of course, warmth and humidity, bright indirect light. Um, you can see it's a cane begonia. So they're on these canes right here and the canes just keep growing up. They can grow up to three feet high. They can get, these plants can get really big. Uh, one more thing about them is they do have little clusters of white flowers that are very cute. Um, I grow them for their leaves because I think that that's one of the most impressive parts of the plant. Not the flowers, but the flowers are cute too. All right, let's talk about some of the things that these plants need. Uh, light, we sort of covered that a little bit. They do like bright, indirect light, and I think that they can handle some morning sun too, as long as it's not too hot. Um, at my house, what I like to do is I put all my begonias together and some of the taller ones kind of shade out the smaller ones. And um, this one in particular is kind of shaded out and it gives it almost a dappled direct sun. And it totally can handle that. Now if you see your begonia burning on the tips or browning on the tips, there's a good chance that it's got too much sun. So you're going to want to move it away from that hot sun. Um, it can take a little bit of, um, sh you know, like a darker area in your house, but it's just not going to thrive. The reason why you want these plants to thrive is because they get really big and impressive. All right, so now let's talk about let's talk about humidity. Uh, this is a super important. All right, so now let's talk about humidity. Oh my god, insanity! All right, now let's talk about humidity. So humidity is pretty important for these plants. Um, I have had a smaller maculata that has not been thriving. It keeps going, it's just small. Um, and that one does not get a lot of humidity. This plant, grown at the same time as that other one, is double the size. And I'll show you the other plant in just a minute. Um, and that has to do with light, but mostly has to do with humidity. Um, this plant was getting a lot of humidity and warmth and it's just so happy. So make sure that you're getting it some type of humidity if you want it to grow fast. Um, you can use a humidifier, obviously. Um, you can mist your plants, put a tray underneath with some rocks, put a little water in it, it'll evaporate, get some humidity, uh, obviously greenhouse. And one other idea that you can do is you can put it in kind of like a little bit bigger pot put some peat moss inside and as the water is evaporating it's also going to provide some humidity. So those are some ideas for creating a little bit more humidity. Alright so this is my other maculata and these were grown at the same time. I don't know if you can tell. I'm going to turn this one this way. Um, <laughs> there's such a big difference. I mean even the color of the leaves are different. So um, this is actually a baby from this one, but they were about the same size at one point. Um, the other thing that's really important is consistent watering. Um, keeping it moist, not letting it dry out too much. The top two inches of the soil is dry, that's good. They're not gonna die, they just, again, won't thrive. These plants are actually pretty hardy. Just if you want it to thrive, you gotta provide it certain, you know, ingredients. Uh, soil, 
You want to make sure that your soil is well drained, like most rainforest plants. Um, make sure that that water comes out the bottom and, it, and the pot's not sitting in water, really important. Uh, you can um, put a soil in there that's well draining. So add perlite, add some orchid bark, anything to kind of break it up. And then, you know, you can add that to your regular potty mix or you can make your own potty mix, either way. Last thing for care for the maculata is fertilizing. They really aren't heavy feeders um, and they grow fast, but when I do fertilize, I fertilize um, half dilution of my regular fertilizer. And I'm usually fertilizing with fish emulsion and a seaweed fertilizer. I try to go the natural route. Um, and I just dilute it by half. You can feed every two to four weeks during the growing season. That's obviously spring and summer, maybe a little bit into fall. And then in the winter time, you know, maybe every five weeks. All right, so here we have Begonia Dawn Miller. Um, this is another cane, angel wing begonia. So it's pretty much gonna have a very similar care as the maculata. Um, and as, just like the maculata, it tends to grow upright, get kind of leggy. So with pruning, we can encourage kind of bushier growth, more full looking plant. Um, we're gonna prune the cane tips because that's where the hormones are produced that's telling the plant to grow up. Um, as we remove, we're gonna remove a fourth of an inch above a leaf and a new leaf's just gonna sprout out right where we cut. Um, of course, I already sterilized my scissors and now I've gotta figure out where I'm gonna cut. It's always a little bit nerve wracking to cut a begonia. So this one's been rooting for, it's another angel wing, this one's been rooting for about a week and a half. And you can see there's roots coming out right out the bottom. Begonia, they pretty much are, it's hard to fail with water propagation. The only part that can be tricky is transitioning from water to soil. You gotta make sure that the environment is right or you'll lose your plant during that transition. But I've had tons of success propagating begonias in water. It's so easy to do. So uh, for one of these, we're gonna do, hi dog. Um, so for one of these, we're going to do water propagation. I'm just gonna pull this lower leaf off like that. And what's really cool about begonias is I could even propagate this leaf. So if you look on the back of the leaf, there's all these veins and all of those veins, if you cut any piece with a vein, you're gonna get roots coming out. Now it's not foolproof, it doesn't always happen. The bigger the vein, the better of a chance. And if you have the stem on there, even better of a chance. But basically, really cool about begonias is you can pretty much propagate any part of this plant. Um, leaf, leaf propagation is another way to do it. Okay, so there we have our cutting, so cute. And it's going to just go into the water and it's gonna sit on my windowsill. I will probably propagate this one as well. I haven't had as much luck propagating leaves in water, although I think I have had a little bit of success, more success with um, a little greenhouse and the leaf in soil or a little, um, like, you know, root tone, root hormone on the bottom of it, and then in soil. So that's what I would suggest with that one. So we're left with the smaller cutting, and this one we're going to put right into a soilless soil mixture. So I'll be right back um, with that. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you very simple soil propagation. Um, this is a mixture of coca core, uh, peat moss, perlite, um, and some other things like um, bark and charcoal, which you know you don't have to add. It's just I just make up a potty mix and I use it for a lot of different stuff. Um, you could 
You can propagate these in just straight perlite. You can propagate them just in straight peat moss. There's a lot of different ways. So I'm gonna use the fancy method with a chopstick to make a hole. And for this one, I'll probably take off this leaf too. You're gonna get, um, you know, you're probably gonna get some roots coming out of this node. So it's kind of nice to remove a leaf. Um, I'm gonna use my fancy chopstick and my fancy finger to press in the soil. Um, and I'm gonna do a little test, see which one of these propagates faster. So with a lot of the tropical plants that I'm trying to propagate, I will put a little humidity dome over them. That really helps keep the moisture in, keep the humidity in. They're gonna need higher humidity when they're very small like this. So um, this is just a plastic bottle that um, I cut the top off of and you can just stick it over it like that. That's, it's got its own private greenhouse. Um, so that's pretty much it for propagation. All right, friends. Well, that's the end of that video and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and please, if you don't have a maculata or a begonia, go get one. They're really fun. Love those plants so much. Super easy to propagate. So you should do it now. Grr. Okay, so what do you have to do? Subscribe, like this video, and I'll see you next time.